Welcome back to another episode of Cobra Kai Companion. And I am Peter. And on the other monitor, I mean microphone, is Watch Party. How are you doing, sir? I am good. I'm on a monitor too, so they yeah, just can't see. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I am on a monitor and my camera is off. But uh, yeah, um, you know, we just had Mother's Day. Did you have a good Mother's Day? Um, well, I'm not a mother, so I didn't have oh. a good like <laughs> say oh. like that. But yes, yes, it was a uh, delightful uh, day. Oh, good. I'm, I'm happy to hear it, and and uh, happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, mm-hmm. for for me, uh, both my biological mother and the the, the um, my stepmother who raised me uh, neither of them live locally so uh so I, I i so i haven't spent like a lot of mother's days with them uh, growing up but definitely the better part of like the last two decades is mostly with my mother-in-law and so i think yesterday was one of the fewest times that i've um not done anything for mother's day so i was preoccupied i won't get into it but um yeah, I, I labor. I just I had to do some. I had to help my brother-in-law do some stuff, and it took up all day. And you know what? I'm, I'm not. Uh, I, I was okay with that. It's a little, a little dramatic. I feel like around the holidays, around the in-laws, is always there's always something. You know, you uh, you marry in and and inherit all the drama. <laughs> it's true. Family. So you were okay with the distraction, is what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Um. Are you someone to... like you do you do uh like things for your wife that you know the mother of your children um like I know a lot of guys do that and yeah I I did for a very long time and at some point it, after it, the it, most uh, recent kid you're like okay it, we're done like <laughs> yeah well, well it, it's um basically you know we just if we really wanted something we just buy it ourselves and thank the other person kind of thing mm-hmm. you know but there, there's been like a father's day where uh she just bought me like a new laptop because she knew i needed one or mm-hmm. um well there was one gift uh the, the airpods pro I, I was not expecting it i had never owned uh an air, air airpods and so mm-hmm. yeah so sometimes she she surprises me and and i feel bad because I'm always working, so I don't get a chance to like go out and shop or whatnot. But that that that's no excuse, right? But um, no, no, we're we're okay with uh, not celebrating. It it really yeah. is about the kids at this point mm-hmm. in our marriage. So right, yeah. So hopefully everyone had a good one. It was um, you know, drama light. <laughs> you know, uh, drama free would be ideal, obviously. But uh, since we last recorded, there's been some updates, uh, some some information uh, that's uh, worthy of sharing. But uh, Watch Party, do you have anything you want to uh, update the listeners uh, on at this moment? Well, it looks like um, Cobra Kai halted production. I mean, that's that's the big update now um, for season six. Looks like maybe they shot one episode um, and then they stopped sometime uh, later last week. Um Presumably because the scripts weren't ready, I guess. I, mean, I don't know the, the exact like reasoning, but yeah, they so they they shot one episode and have halted. So now everything is in limbo until the writer strike is finished. Right, right. And for those that want to hear a little bit more about it, there's a really great episode on the podcast Open To It. Uh, that's with Emily and her co-host, Megan, I feel. Yeah, I Megan's feel terrible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they they had one of the um other staff writers, uh, Olga, uh, o- Olga L. She she was a guest on there. Um, uh, I from what I understand, she attends the meetings and takes uh, copious amounts of notes. And uh, so they had her on to kind of explain it in layman terms to uh, people that uh, are curious. So there were some really great bullet points in there. Uh, I definitely want to have you guys go seek that out and and uh, check out that podcast and and hear what Olga had to say. And who knows, um, perhaps we can uh, maybe have somebody uh, involved or in the know to possibly uh, come on and, and uh, share with us what they know or what they can share as well. So uh, go check it out. Open to it podcast. Um, what I did get from that. Well, I was going to, do... I was going to add, yeah, because yeah. Um, if you follow me on social media, um, I shared uh, basically it was two pages of base of the, the breakdown of what the, what the WJ, what the writers are asking for. And then what the studios were offering or not offering as the case was. And sometimes um, I put that on Twitter and Instagram. If you just, if you're just curious and you want to look at it, I mean, that it, some of it gets into the details, like, you know, the nitty gritty of it. But yeah, I put that out on social media. I got it straight from the WGA, uh, the WGA's website. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. 
and and she she does speak on uh, a lot of the things you brought up on the last episode too like mm-hmm. a residual was definitely a big topic and mm-hmm. and that was kind of broken down and explained a little bit and mm-hmm. also compared to like that the previous strikes as well so yeah. um there's one thing that she said uh, a, f- uh, a few times that um uh, th- that that I think should give people some optimism is that uh from picketing olga has uh, picked up from other uh, people that had um picketed before uh went on strike before the, the the other times they always win so it's just a matter of time so uh that's you know if people were wondering like oh are things gonna get canceled i mean well it depends on the show and and the things that are going mm-hmm. on and and all that so there's a lot of things that factor in onto the the different um shows that are actually uh, currently in production so uh a lot lots of great nuggets um yeah i'm trying to think if there's any like big ones but it was it was really really informational uh, I'll, I'll say that um anything else ah yes uh you made a really great video today do you want to uh, tell the listeners a little bit about that oh yeah um and this is where some of the information comes from it, it comes courtesy of uh amy uh who was at an event in nashville uh, which featured, I guess, also Martin Cove and Billy uh, Zapka was there. And so uh, Billy was talking a little bit about it. Um, and, and you know, and he had mentioned that, you know, they I guess that's where they they finished one episode. And he, he was just sort of talking, but, he, you know, he was assuring the audience. No, no, no. Season six is going to be so great. So great. This, the scripts we've read so far are so amazing. And uh, there's like two big fights in it. Uh, So that's something that came from that video that uh, Amy had posted. Uh, So two big fights in in the first episode. Uh, So there's a little bit something right there. Um, He also talked about they've read scripts. He said it in plural. So they've they've they have more than one script, but they've only shot one at the moment. Right. Right. So that's something to be excited about. Uh, I know that Sholo had shared a story at the uh, Lakers versus Warriors um, uh, playoff game. And I believe that was uh, the game six. That That's the one that would send the Warriors home. And so so Sholo was back in uh, L.A. Uh, for, mm-hmm. for that. So it's, it looks like some of the cast members have uh, kind of returned home. Um, to you know, and some of them were on the picket lines, too, I think. Um, um, uh, Alicia Hanna Kim was there, wasn't yes. she? She yeah. was uh, Tony Odell. If if mm-hmm. I did mention it last time, he yeah. has also been down there. So a, a lot of support from actors. Uh, Rob Lowe w- was also mm-hmm. down there. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I, I feel like we already mentioned this. Thomas Ian Griffith and uh, Mary Page Keller. Yeah, I think they, that they was were... from last time. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah so... I, and I was even th- yeah, some of the specific Cobra Kai people um were there. Um... Yeah, and. So any, any new signs that has become a favorite of yours or uh, you, you want to mention or that made you chuckle? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, There's now been... I, I'll have to file them away as I see some because off the top of my head, I don't I don't um, um I don't have any off the top of my head. I think there's um, um, no. There's... Yeah. There, there's an idea that Olga shared uh, on on the episode of um, Open to It, where she she didn't do it, but the idea has crossed her mind, and the reason she uh, decided against it was because she did she she was she had thought like, well, what if people don't get the reference? And basically, it was a uh, honk if you want to see my bits, you know, and and <laughs> so, so, so it was it was questioned, would people know what a bit is? And they're like, eh, yeah, I think so, you know, so. So that was pretty funny, but they. Well, you know, Susan Gallagher's got to get that one yeah, if she yeah. can, if she, she can make it. Yeah. yeah, she should. She should show up yeah. as homeless land and yeah. absolutely yeah. Uh, spin aside too. For, for or Kobe she Kai. should threaten them. <laughs> right, Give right. them the deal, or you see my. <laughs> right, exactly. Or I'll show you my bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's that's a secret weapon right there. There it's, you it's, go. It's, it's, it's in, in homeless land. Uh, gosh, there's talk about something we'd like to see in season six. Well, I, I don't want to speak for you, but uh, completely forgot about that. You know, well, we got to yeah. get a wrap up somehow. You know, is oh, Chris actually a gonna... conclusion to that storyline? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Does Chris indeed walk away with her hand in marriage or something? Oh, man. So, uh, anything else you can think of in terms of updates before we break into our uh, topic this week? Um, I think that's it, uh, for right now. Yeah, Just okay. This. 
I, I think um, we need to definitely decide on an exact wording of the title. I've kind of been bouncing around with it. But uh, the last time we spoke, I had mentioned that this uh, this week's topic would be uh, top five mentions of Miyagi. And we kind of explained uh, the mentions would be like uh, anytime it's, he's referenced or um, that's basically a mention or reference, right? Uh, do you Can you think of like another wording of it that might be like sexier as a title or a headline? Like Miyagi acknowledgments, like that, like you're acknowledging Miyagi. Because yeah. now I'm Miyagi. looking at was he specifically about- mentioned or referenced? Like, I don't know. On, on this one I'm looking at. Yeah, right mention, like, like, uh, like top five Miyagi references. Would that still not be... Does, does that not really explain it? I mean, I think that is works good enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, so, so we'll do that. So I will amend the title top five Miyagi references. Um, and good thing too, cause I already made the graphic with, with the, uh, with that exact wording. So, um, your list was this difficult to compile. Um, I had a few, uh, that jumped out immediately. I was thinking, you know, like I want to include these. There were some, I thought that, um, I, I, probably knew I didn't want to include, um, which maybe surprise you. Cause I like, there's like, in fact, I even considered asking you, should we do like one that's like, like, like have one, like I, I didn't like this reference or something, but, but I, we don't need to do that. But yeah, um, like there were some, I'm thinking like, I don't want to include that. And then, and then I just wanted to try, I'm like going through the show. Cause I don't, I want to make sure I don't forget anything, you know, like through my head and looking back through each individual season. Uh, just so I don't, so don't you know, miss anything because that was the other thing I was worried I would forget something. Right, right. Yeah. I I know I'm definitely going to forget things, and I had mentioned to you um, just a few days ago that there was a decent amount of people commenting, you know, in our Facebook mm-hmm. group. So mm-hmm. so that's exciting, and hopefully they mm-hmm. mention some things I don't, and vice versa. Um, mm-hmm. for for me, I I I probably had about four like off the top and then it mm-hmm. was a matter of like okay do i want to put that in the honorables and w- what do i want to keep for my top five and i i didn't want to do the research because I, I wanted to think of the ones that really stand out and then i went back and that's and, yeah and that's a good way to tell too is it right. you know, something that sends out <laughs> exactly it immediately pops into my head and then and then i think how i ranked them was i went back and watched those moments and and kind of ranked them by how it impacted me in a, in a sense of like um how did it make me feel right like like mm-hmm. it, it, it it's not necessarily like a good feeling but in in this moment like how how strongly did this reference make me feel right and so that's kind of how i ranked it um i I feel like I might have went first last time. It doesn't really matter, but I will have you start off uh, this episode with your number five reference of Miyagi. Okay. So my number five, I feel like is a little bit of a cheat. Um, Mm. I'll I'll just tell that because I did, I actually kind of included two just because I think they're bookends and they go together. Ah, Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, so I'll give you the whole thing. Uh, Season two, episode two, back in black, accompanied with season two, episode 10, No Mercy. That is Daniel uh, putting up the picture of Mr. Miyagi uh, right when he's opening the dojo on on the day of the first lesson and, you know, big shoes to fill. Uh, And then the bookend of that is at the end of the season, he takes down the picture of Mr. Miyagi, looks at it and literally apologizes to it. I tried my best. I'm sorry. Um, that that actually, you know, that was uh, that was the one I thought of later because, and it really meant something to me. I really liked that those moments and especially the bookend of it, uh, because because a it it makes sense for Daniel. I loved I loved so much the first time watching season two when he's when they're putting that dojo together and he's like putting up the the Miyagi picture with the other uh, historical people uh, like who uh, founded the the art and stuff. And so it's like Miyagi is part of the continuation and they included Miyagi with, uh, you know, real world uh, people. And that was something I loved so much and it just made so much sense. And I, and I always loved that. And it keeps his memory alive in the dojo. Right. I I, I love that. I've never even thought about it as a bookend, but you're, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like oh, uh, would you would you say season two most underrated season? 
Yes, yes. In fact, I've been saying that since at least since season five came out. Um, yeah, just um, it is it is underrated. Yeah, so many good uh, out, mm-hmm. out of season two. So many like um, so many moments that people kind of I don't want to say forgotten about, but there's so many greatness uh, that came out of it. You know, we um, kind of mm-hmm. mentioned like the. Let's see, let the, yeah, the last topic, the things we want to see in season six, you know, the ice ice block, you know, he right. Daniel didn't get to do it, but but just the the, the setup and you know his mm-hmm. two students versus Johnny's like dojo on stage and all that. Mm-hmm. So a lot, lot of great uh, out of season two. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe we can come up with a topic that involves like just season two stuff too. That might be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, my number five, uh, this one was definitely like something. Um, when when this moment happened. I was just like, holy shit, I never thought about it that way. And I feel like this speaks for like a, a lot of the viewers of, of, of Cobra Kai that uh, didn't grow up with the uh, the Craddy Kid films. It's when Anthony doesn't care what Miyagi would say in uh, season four, episode eight. Um, I believe it was episode eight, Minefields. It's yeah, uh, Minefield. when, yeah, uh, Daniel, you know, he finds out that Anthony had paid somebody to do the chores. He's like, you know what Mr. Miyagi would say? He's like, I don't care. You know, and then... Yeah. Good yeah, that, that whole it's episode seven, by the way. That's oh, seven. Eight, so, eight okay. is the prom one. Yeah, but that's right. That's right. Seven. Party time. So it's, it's seven minefield. So the title is correct. Um, yeah, and, and then you know it, it leads to like you know everybody's got all these great memories. I don't remember him and all that. And then like later on, Anthony thinks about it, and then he goes into the dojo to to kind of see like the pictures and you know so like. A, uh, a lot of people, the the younger audience, I would imagine, like they grew up and probably heard the name in pop culture, you know, like reference to pop culture and whatnot. You know, uh, uh, Mike at Cobra Kai Wisdom recently just shared uh, a clip from Air, which I, I got to see in theater. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I didn't realize that it was coming home, uh, you know, uh, streaming so soon. But yeah, there, there's a sequence because that film takes place in 84, 85. Jason Bateman's character makes a reference to uh, Mr. Miyagi. So mm-hmm. so he's constantly um brought up uh, wax on wax off we hear it all the time but these these younger you know audience the members they, they 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 get the reference but they don't really understand what was so great about that man. You know because mm-hmm. maybe they didn't see those movies mm-hmm. and it wouldn't it wouldn't be until like Cobra Kai that maybe would kind of pique their interest to to actually check out the movies, right? Like we've heard about the younger cast members, they'd never seen the Karate Kid until after they got the role and decided to to go watch the film with each other, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So um yeah, it, it just when when Anthony said it, it's just like wow, yeah, never really thought about that because we didn't get mm-hmm. much Anthony before in the previous seasons. Mm-hmm. So that that kind of came out and I was just like, wow, okay. You know, I've I feel that for Anthony. Clicks, He's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So Thanks. so that's it for my number five. Yeah, really good so, one. Thank you. Uh back to you for number four. All right. Um, so for number four, I I went the other way, so to speak. So this is it. This is one maybe you wouldn't be expecting. Uh, so my number four is actually, wow, a lot of fours here. So number four is season four, episode four, by Syphilie. When Terry Silver says to Crease, you had the entire valley in the palm of your hand and you blew it all because of your rivalry with Miyagi. Mm-hmm. And so he's referencing Miyagi there. And what I liked about this one is it's the other side of this. And it's it's kind of Think I like I get Terry Silver and it to Miyagi. It's like Miyagi is this looming figure for those two men as well. And it's it's the completely side. We and so he, we're seeing it from their angle, and it's like Miyagi ruined this, and and you couldn't get rid of this rivalry with Miyagi, and you were obsessed with it. And we know Kreese is still obsessed with it, with other mentions and such. Uh, so I, I really like that to see that Miyagi is this figure over. Not just Daniel, but like the other characters, Terry Silver increase as well. I love it. I love it. That's a really good one. I uh, mm-hmm. I hadn't thought about that, mm-hmm. and I don't have much more to add uh, except for like you're right. You're absolutely right to hear it from uh, the, the, their point of view, right? Mm-hmm. right? And my number four actually kind of ties into that a little bit um, in terms of the one of the characters involved. Uh, this is Sensei Crease from. Uh, season two episode one. don't remember the episode it might be the end of episode one or two but it's when johnny and crease come out of the convenience store episode and, two and yeah episode yeah two. that's okay. the end of episode yeah. two so it's like you know the the, the whole i, I kind of i'm paraphrasing right crease mm-hmm. says something like the whole gang's back together you know or and then basically it's the line my condolences 
you yeah, know, Mike and, 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 and yeah, and that's Bugs Merck, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you, that, like I remember that just getting under my skin and, mm-hmm. you know, and like my, my reaction was like, you motherfucker, you know, you know, like, like yeah. I, I wanted to throw down, you know, those are fighting words, you know? Um, so it, it, it really got to me and, and, and watching that scene again, I was just like, Ooh, you know, I was bawling on my fist, you know, feeling like Daniel, but uh, yeah, it, it's just uh, whoever came up with that. It's just, it, it was brilliant. It's just a couple words. My condolences. You know, I know. Like, sucks sucks you know sorry not sorry you know this uh, is basically what he's saying you know mm-hmm. the, it, you know basically the crease in that moment is uh for anybody that follows me on social media i like to use the, sh- uh, the shrugging emoji that's exactly what crease was doing yeah <laughs> i do that too yeah, yeah. so yeah. uh and it's, it's great yeah. because you're right it does tie into mine because when terry silver it's your you were you were obsessed with your rivalry with miyagi you couldn't get over it. and you see all these years later he still has it so yeah Definitely, right. we were both kind of thinking the same thing in the same direction there, um, and and um, and Daniel claps back with the uh, you know he he kind of asks him about his fist. How's your you head? Know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 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 that was good too. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to you for number four. All right, um, number four. Okay, so this one, this one may may surprise some people, <laughs> but but I have a reason for it. Uh, my number three. Season Three. one, okay. episode two, strike first. It's actually when Daniel tells Kyler, it wasn't until I met a good friend of mine did it begin to grow on me. He's talking about sushi. He he's oh, a okay. uh he was from Okinawa. Um, this one kind of really uh actually sticks with me more than you would imagine because it's first off, it's the first reference to Miyagi in the series. Mm. Um, you know, and the in the first reference is Daniel talking to Kyler of all people. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, his it's like his daughter's boyfriend. He's talking to Kyler, and it's like he he references Miyagi and and something you'll you'll find about me as we go through these is I I'll, I'll always have like a, an extra special place in my heart for the first of anything, and like mm, this okay. is the first Miyagi mention in the series. In in and I always I think back to that first time I watched the series when you're just why you, you you haven't even signed up for the YouTube red yet because this is episode two, so you're still even on the the free two episodes that to watch and it and it just it clicks to me because like I can see Daniel now kind of talking about Mr. Miyagi in that way. And it's, and it's so great where it's, it's referencing the movies. So as like a fan, you get that it's referencing the movies, but it's not like making a big deal out of like, like, haha, here's your nostalgia. You know, it just, and it makes so sense, so much sense. And it makes so much sense, you know, in the scene, he's talking to his daughter's boyfriend who she invited over and you know so so he doesn't say well when i was young my father had died and i grew to this great mentor who took a father figure no he doesn't he references he calls him a good friend you know he doesn't say father figure you know many times in the series and this is the first he refers he, he refers to miyagi as a good friend to other people to people who didn't know miyagi uh that's like the only way he knows how to refer to it refer to to Mr. Miyagi as just a good friend and and but it, like it makes sense and so that always just the fact that it works so well and you know it's just what drew me into the show it was episode 2 and so like i said i these these first occurrences will always uh really mean more to me you you know what that sounds like to me what does that sound like good writing mm, yeah AI yeah i can't come up with yeah. that shit <laughs> <laughs> ai would have said my uh, my father figure, a, a karate master. <laughs> so yes, like my that. surrogate father and karate <laughs> instructor dash sensei. Uh, he he, he yeah. was originally my handyman uh, at an apartment that uh, my mom and I moved into. Yeah, you know, in the beginning of the first movie. So, um, I uh, yeah, I it, and I like like how there's kind of nonchalantness of, of like. The whole story too mm-hmm. you know just yeah kind of it's kind well, of... he's like okinawa where are you from and then kyler's like uh irvine like like, like kyler himself yeah. doesn't even know like uh, irvine like, <laughs> yeah. all right yeah all right <laughs> yeah oh kyler um well wonder what they got uh in stores for him in season six i don't know uh <laughs> for me my number three kind of goes back to your number four where it's uh 
a whole you know the the other side of the story kind of thing right mm -hmm. and this takes place in uh season one episode eight molting when johnny tells his story to miguel uh, mm. references mr miyagi as a karate master which right. daniel has of his own he assaults <laughs> yeah. him and his friends and he thinks that uh his, um his buddy tommy had brain damage from from mm -hmm. the fight so just yeah hearing that side of the story and johnny's uh, version of it was uh hysterical and uh even like previously when when he's talking about daniel and like miguel calling him an asshole and all that so it's just a chef's kiss you know just like yeah. of course mm -hmm. you know that's, that's the way he looked at it mm -hmm. just like wait a minute i hadn't seen this guy in months and then he dazzles me with a hose we chase him and then out of nowhere this karate master assaults us yeah. so, turns out okay. turns out he's got a karate master in his own it's, yeah it's Who's like on yeah, his yeah. own like like he's keeping him in the closet like like ha -ha! <laughs> At the right moment, you know, yeah. he's so, like with, with the Pokeball, he summons yeah. like this the mysterious Pokemon. That's yeah. a credit master. Of his own. It's a it's yeah. a great uh, Johnny, uh, but there, uh, yeah. a peak, peak Johnny moment, I guess. Yeah, -ish, adjacent. So, uh, number two to you. Number two. All right. Ah, okay. So this one you could you could, I I consider this there's like a, a long protracted one and I I split it and so I'm specifying one specific part of it as you'll see season one episode five counterbalance uh, when Daniel remembers uh, Mr Miyagi telling him about the lesson of balance in his car so so I I know he's he's at the grave first but I'm specifically referring to the part after that which which I think is just really really good uh, when Daniel gets into his car and he kind of looks over and we have sort of the flashback to Miyagi um when he was in the the car on his birthday from the first movie of course and and we see that and it's like Daniel's talking to Mr Miyagi right there yeah yeah it's it definitely a beautiful moment a beautiful moment a lot of see and that's why i feel the consensus is season one is like a perfect season it's just mm -hmm. so much good so much setup mm -hmm. um a, a, lot, a lot of love went into it obviously and again just the good ass writing you know yeah um my number two is kind of more recent i i no, I had I had a season four in here. So this one is also season four, episode two. Uh, what is it? First Action. learn stand. First, first learn, learn stand. stand. Okay, yeah, yeah. First learn stand. First learn stand. So this is when um this is when Johnny is doing the house chores, mm -hmm. and and basically um Daniel has to remind him that Mr. Miyagi has has uh you know saved him uh, a couple times, and yeah. at this moment, um. Again, kind of for I I feel for the audience that didn't grow up with the Karate Kid film, they start with Cobra Kai and really they're on board and and Johnny is their their Miyagi and mm -hmm. and he's the badass. But for Johnny to take a moment and think about Mr. Miyagi and continue on doing Miyagi's method and and unorthodox tra training, he accepted like that's right, Mr. Miyagi was a badass, mm -hmm. and that's also for those like you know johnny fans like oh well if johnny thinks he's a badass then i should too you know mm -hmm. so if they weren't quite on board at that point you know it's a moment of realization for johnny or at least a reminder and um yeah i, I think that uh i kind of spoke to to people as well it it spoke to me because that was my number one um, oh damn yeah that was my number one. I first learned Stan, maybe my favorite episode of the series. Um, I haven't rethought it after, since season five, but through season four, it was my favorite episode. Um, and it even still, it may be second or <laughs> third. But uh, yeah, that because I just loved that episode, especially this the, the whole moment, um, because, you know, Johnny's painting. He he's like whatever. He takes a beer. He starts riffing on on Daniel's beer. You got fruit in the beer pisses Daniel off. And then what I loved so much is you know, Daniel karate chops the beer like Mister Miyagi did um, mm -hmm. in the movie. And it just and it goes back to that. Like like you said, nobody was more badass than Mister Miyagi. And what's so great is you're right. Johnny does. There's there's no dialogue. Johnny doesn't say anything. He just puts the bottle down, picks up the brush, and goes back to work because because there's no counter to that. That is like the ultimate trump card. It is the ultimate moment. Like there's nobody more badass. It's like yes, that is correct, and uh, he's gonna go back and he's gonna do the lessons. Um, yeah, just my uh, one of my favorite moments of one of my favorite episodes. Um, 
kind of a tangent to this, but if for those who remember and have been around, that was actually a moment that was uh, leaked or spoiled to us uh, via yes. like the, <laughs> the cards. Yep. And, and what's so great is, and this is why I say spoilers don't mean anything, because when I saw that, even though I was part of the big one putting that out there, uh, you know, Bri- Brianna found it and we were doing that. Um, I still loved it. It was just, the, just watching that was such an amazing experience. And um, so spoilers, don't worry about it. It's actually not that big a deal. <laughs> and, See, uh, and, was- and that's, that's a prime example of, um, uh, I'm sure they have all said it, but um, I, I remember uh, it being said by Josh more vividly is that, you know, they, they may know some of like the details. I'm paraphrasing here, but they may um, find out some of the details. And he's talking about like the leaks and whatnot, but they don't know, like, how, how did we get there? You know, the, right, the journey right. to 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 there. So that's that's a really good example of it. And um, that that say that that's a, also a good example of. Uh, less is more like Johnny didn't mm-hmm. say anything in that moment. A lesser mm-hmm. writer, mm-hmm. you know, would have said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, if you're right, you're right. The Russo, you know, like some, yeah. some stupid, some stupid some, re- some, remark, you know, like, no, yeah, you know, just, you think about it and like, mm-hmm. you understand that he's processing it. Like that, that's mm-hmm. a human thing right. that AI won't understand. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that uh, my number one, I feel, is going to show up on a lot of lists, and I was almost avoiding it for the obvious. But like I mentioned at the top of the show, that you know, it, how did it impact me? I went back and rewatched it, and I could not stop myself from sobbing of Miyagi's right path letter. Mm-hmm. And so um, Kumiko is reading this to Daniel because it's in uh, Okinawa, and, and you know, he's talking about uh, he's back in the hospital again. This is the week uh, before he uh, passes. Uh, we we learn from Daniel. And uh, in there, he talks about being called uh, Tanmei by by Sam, um, mm-hmm. and also, oh, gosh, what is it? Uh, oh, and 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 also how uh, Daniel has, oh gosh, now I'm, I'm forgetting the details. That even though he's hard headed, he, yeah, do you kind of remember the details of that? Did, did um, Daniel help him find balance, or showed him kind of the like the right way, the, or the way back? Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, and then like in, in Miyagi fashion, you know, he's like, "Yeah, I heard that in a car commercial." <laughs> you like it, <laughs> you know? So like, like a little joke, you know, that the, the cherry on top. Can, can um, I ask you one question yeah. about that? About that, that I heard it in a car commercial. So like when I first heard that, I thought it was a good like a, a great in joke, in that um that Maybe Daniel um, said it. It's the people who who lead us back to the right path. Yeah, that Daniel said it, and it was like I imagined that as Daniel's initial advertising campaign for his car dealership. So like like when Miyagi's saying I hear it in a car commercial, he's being literal. Like and so the idea being that like it was Daniel's own words through Mr. Miyagi back to him that like brought them back closer together. And Daniel saw what he meant for Mr. Miyagi too. Yeah, but then I, some people are like, Oh, it's just, I guess it's just like a joke that people say, Oh, I heard it in a car commercial, but I, I didn't ever took it like that. Yeah. I I've never uh, like uh, processed it fully. Like both thoughts have crossed my mind. Like, was it like Daniel's commercial and she, you know, he's not saying it. Or um, is he is he just saying it just to be funny? But I, I feel that's a discussion that was also had in the writers' room. Like, which way do they want to lean? Mm-hmm. And I feel they are leaving it up to our own interpretation. But I do like the idea that uh, it's come full circle that it was probably Daniel. So mm-hmm. I, I I feel like I'm in that camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just I I I couldn't do it. The the the, the waterfalls came. You know, I I was just like I, I was getting choked. I was like every single time. So um yeah that that's my number one. Um okay so let's see we'll go back to unrolled mentions. Why don't you um uh, uh go over your couple uh unrolled mentions and then recap your top five? Okay, so go through my unrolled mentions. Hold yeah. on a second. I'm on the other monitor and the monitor's flickering. You want, you want me to go? Okay. Uh no, no, here it is. Okay. It's back. Okay. Honorable mention season four, episode seven, minefields. Uh, when Daniel tells Anthony Mr. Uh he kicked Mr. Miyagi in the face. 
And okay. Mr. Miyagi said he would protect them all. I thought that was a good moment. Um, it almost made the list, but it got bumped down to honorable mentions. Uh, you know, similar because you had it on your list too. So, you know, that definitely led that connection between Anthony and Mr. Miyagi and, you know, seeing little that Mr. Miyagi, you know, we never saw, you know, between the movies and the show. Um, right. right. Uh, next one, season four, episode 10, The Fall. Uh, yeah, Daniel tells Johnny, uh, Mr. Miyagi, he told him one day he'll do karate his own way. This is when ultimately Daniel asked Johnny to help him um, basically be on the, on the side coach Sam for the final fight. That's when they come back together. And it, that has that flashback to Karate Kid 3. You know, one day you do karate your way. Um, so that one was an honorable mention. I thought that was a good one. And uh, season one, episode eight, molting. Um, Lucille says to Daniel, uh, uh, Mr. Miyagi, he was so good to us. And I liked that um, so early because we were really seeing it from Lucille's perspective just a little, um, which is something we never we didn't get a whole lot of in the movies. Uh, you know, So that was like filling out the gap, I think, a little bit and seeing that, too. Right. And re recap your five. And recapping the five. Um, number five was the season two, episodes two and ten. Uh, the bookends of Daniel putting up the picture, um, you know, at the beginning of opening the dojo of Mr. Miyagi. And then at the very end, he takes down a picture of Mr. Miyagi and literally apologizes to it. Uh, number four, season four, episode four, uh, by Cephaly. This is Terry Silver decrease. Mm -hmm. You had the entire valley in the palm of your hand and you blew it all because of your rivalry with Miyagi. That one, number three, season one, episode two, first strike or strike, strike first. Uh, Daniel, Daniel saying to Kyler, um, he didn't like sushi at first. It wasn't until I met a good friend of mine. Did it grow on me? He was from Okinawa. The very first reference to Miyagi in the show. Uh, number two, season one, episode five, counterbalance. Uh, Daniel remembering Mr. Miyagi uh, at his car and his lesson uh, about the balance uh, that was for at the uh, leaving the grave, uh, the grave. And uh, number one, season four, episode two, uh, first learned Stan. Uh, Daniel reminds Johnny that Miyagi saved him and nobody was more badass than Mr. Miyagi. And Johnny has no answer. He just picks up the brush and goes back to work. That's a really good list. Um, love everything that you have on there and all the explanations. Definitely, you know, I, I think uh, for for those that you know watch a lot of like interviews or you know listen to podcasts or whatnot, I, I feel um, you have heard before that it was important to a lot of people when they created the show that the spirit of Miyagi, you know, was was alive. You know that that mm -hmm. it continued to live on, and I think this episode, you know, we we've been giving like really great examples of of how well they did it, you know, mm -hmm. incorporating him into story. So, um, yeah, I lo love that list. Um, so I forgot that it was supposed to be three honorable mentions. I have two. <laughs> That's so, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I actually have one, uh, uh, this exact same one as you, he was so good to us. Uh, you know, like, like you said, well, all we had was the oh, films mm -hmm. and, um, uh, we didn't get a lot of Lucille and the, the very small, uh, parts that we had with her there's one where you know he gives her the uh the bonsai tree in the first movie mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm. that the, the fact that she says he was good to us it's is to let us know that well it wasn't just like you know he, he was nice to me those few instances but it was all, all about you know daniel larusso he mm -hmm. was good to us like you know uh all, all the times that we didn't see them all on screen together yeah so, over the uh, years yeah, mm -hmm. exactly and the other one I had for honorable mentions was, um, oh, so that was what, 108, right? Molting also? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. 108. Um, my next one comes from uh, uh, 510, uh, the head of the uh, head of the snake. This is when Terry Silver and Chosen are fighting. And Chosen, so so this one is Miyagi adjacent. He says, you know nothing of Miyagi-Do. You know, oh, so, right. yeah. So him saying that, that's um the, I correct me if I'm wrong. I feel it. that's the first time he, has said as much in those words that that's you know that that's 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 who he represents right like we saw in part two that you know he fought for for sato and and his dojo um this 
you know, and, and I know that he had like the, the uh, Miyagi artifacts in season three, but I feel this was the first time that 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 it was like spoken in words that he was part of Miyagi-Do. Uh, yeah, in episode five, when Daniel was trying to send him home, he said it's always a privilege to defend the honor of Miyagi-Do, I think. Uh, but but yeah, but but definitely here in, in is the, the heat of the moment and and he's standing up for Miyagi Do to Terry Silver. Uh, right. You know, the, so, mm. so everything in that moment um is why I had uh ha- had it and it, just because it is uh, Miyagi adjacent, that's why I have it in my honorable and you know the um just just that moment it was very much like keep my ma- keep my name out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, I just I I, I, lo- I love that moment. Mm-hmm. And to recap, my five I had uh, Anthony doesn't care what Miyagi would say in season four. Uh, my condolences by Crease from season two. Uh, Karate master and he comes out of nowhere and salsa brain damage. Um, that was Johnny's story episode one oh eight mm-hmm. molting mm-hmm. uh and let's see daniel reminding mr miyagi was a badass in 402 and miyagi's uh right path letter from 304 304 yeah yeah so um so that was cool. our list let's see what the i i would have thought you yeah. would have had the, the one from counterbalance though in season one but that that's when i thought you may have had or we would overlap on did you not think of that one or just uh Remember me again? I know you just recaptured. The, the, you, know, the, you know, when when Daniel visits Miyagi's grave for the first time. Ah, uh, yes, and yes. That, um, and that whole sequence, like, yeah, it it, it did. Uh, that that crossed my mind, and I'm sure we will get to it in the feedback. The the the, the bedroom scene and the mm-hmm. stuff that Amanda said. So many, right? And um, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I and and I think that's why you know instead of like we did the you know like initially when we talked about doing uh, this type of show, we, I I I brought up oh what about you know five top five and then five honorable mentions you're like well that's might as well just do a top ten and so that's, <laughs> so we should we shorten the honorable mentions to make it more challenging right yeah and so um yeah there there was uh, it's it was definitely hard to to cut but I'm you know one of those mm-hmm. examples that I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad you mentioned it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for for sure, just yeah. a lot of great mm-hmm. moments. Um, yeah. there, there's one I don't. I'm pretty sure. Like I tried not like uh, looking at feedback, but I'm pretty sure this won't show up. And this is this is what I'll end up using for the uh, the image t- when I share this this episode is when Daniel's on the beach and he sees a fisherman. He sees a fisherman. <laughs> yeah. Well, so right when to... you started saying that, I thought, oh, now I know what he means. Which one he means? <laughs> yeah. That's a so, good one, actually. That one I is. forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so I was just like, oh, do I, which image do I, do I show the fisherman or do I show Daniel and like the, the hat in the corner of the frame? So that's the one I went with. I will say um, most of mine are from seasons four and one. And then I have one that they're yeah. from season two, uh, the, yeah. the picture in the dojo. Um, Se- season four was so strong. Cause it just like tonally, it, it felt different, you mm-hmm. know, and, mm-hmm. um, it was almost kind of like, you know, what's se- what season one could have been had they had you know quote unquote netflix money yeah you know we, mm-hmm. we don't know if that made the difference but it felt different for sure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um in the group the first comment comes from jd uh he quotes for man with no forgiveness in heart life worse punishment than death and the let's see he says this quote has always reinforced why i can't waste mental or emotional energy on holding grudges oh i love that mm-hmm. i so okay mm-hmm. yeah yeah what why that's on there i, I think it was definitely worth the mention so thank you jd um, the next one comes from Jeff. He says, I love when Amanda talks about the night before their wedding and the letter scene with Kumiko. So, yep, th- there it is. Mm-hmm. That's the one about mm-hmm. the... Uh, the, the um, and Kumiko. Mm-hmm. And Kumiko. Uh, JD adds to Jeff's um, uh, comment, the letter from Miyagi is one of the, the biggest crying moments in all of Cobra Kai. I love it. And I agree. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's why I, I had to put it at number one because I was like, I might be able to slide without it, but just watching the scene and hearing Kumiko read it and Daniel react to it, that's, you know, it breaks me every time. There's um, some good to it. I had some issues with it that I made a video on a while back, but uh, that's why it's not on my list. But uh, yeah, I may, but, I'll have to revisit. I'll have to revisit, <laughs> which reminds me, like, you know, at some point I got, I got to put up our discussion of uh, Miyagi pitches, you know, the prequel pitches uh, oh, and, and yeah. talking about that video. Yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Uh, the next one comes from Ron. He says, I agree with Jeff. My favorite Miyagi mentions are the ones by the characters who we didn't see interact with him in the movies. It's kind of cool that Amanda and Samantha knew him and referenced him. And I'm I'm adding this too. And 
that's mm-hmm. the reason that uh, John, Josh, and Hayden uh, made made uh, Mr. Miyagi pass a little bit later in life than than Pat Morita did. That was mm-hmm. that was the question that I asked John in one of his early Q and A's back in the days. Is mm-hmm. like, yeah, wh- why that? And he he said that they they wanted that um, Mr. Miyagi to have been part of the Larusos before his passing. Right. So. And so everyone's kind of saying that, yeah, we, we love that, you know, hearing mm-hmm. these stories uh, from from the, the new characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, he continues, but if I had to pick a favorite, I'd say Kumiko reading the the uh, letter Miyagi wrote Yukie to Daniel and seeing his reaction. It was mm-hmm. one of the best moments in the season and one of the best moments in the series, in my humble opinion, which, you know, hard, hard to disagree when it was my number one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Jeff adds, he agrees as well. That is one of the scene. Uh, that is the one scene that literally hits me every uh, single time I see it. And I have seen it a lot, a lot in all caps. Um, the next comment comes from Alondra, who's been de- uh, designing some um, um, t- uh, T-shirts for us. And she is currently working on a Terry Silver one. So work in progress. Um she says, definitely the letter scene uh, when Amanda talks about the night before the wedding. And I I know they didn't mention him directly, but I love when Chosen says, I make one big mistake. Uh, I should have taken you with me, just like Miyagi said to Yukie. I think it's very subtle, but powerful reference. And I agree, like that that crossed my mind as well. Um, and I, I guess I didn't really commit one way or the other, but I was like, do I want to use quotes you know, because it is a, a sort of reference, right? Which is mm-hmm. what Alondra is also saying. So I do love that she mentioned it because that's also a great, you know, Miyagi reference because he he says that to you in part two, obviously. Right. Uh, Ron comes back. Uh, I also like when Johnny references Mr. Miyagi first in an incredulous way when Daniel teaches him Miyagi-Do. Uh, you can help him with his English. And then he references him the first time he fights Silver by using Miyagi's moves to defend himself. And then in season five, when the Sekai Takai committee asked for the dojo's name, Johnny volunteers first, we are Miyagi-Do. Johnny's attitude toward Miyagi over the course of the series really shows his growth as a character. I Yeah, I completely agree. Love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Um, he still needs to learn the history, though the ancestry. You know, shrimp post and say, it's close. It's close. Yeah, you it's, know, it's, it's partial close. Credit. Yeah. Partial. Maybe, maybe he'll, he'll get it right uh, in season six. Um, <laughs> the next one comes from Mike P, aka Cobra Kai Wisdom. He quotes, "Your sensei is a man of great honor. I can, uh, I can only hope to be like him." And says, "I was blown away the first time I heard Chosen say that about Mr. Miyagi. What a change from how he." spoke about and to Mr. Miyagi and Credit Kid too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pe- people change. If you Very can change, true. I can yeah. change. You know. Uh, and the nope, a couple more. Uh the next one comes from David M. He says, my all-time favorite reference would be the letter from season three, but I want to do a shout out uh episode 105 with Miyagi's grave. Seeing mm-hmm. that for the first time way back in season one really choked me up. It was at that moment that I realized that this series was in good hands. I still get shivers every time. I also always like to imagine the line, I really wish you were here, was improvised. I know it probably wasn't, but I always saw that as a slight fourth wall break and Ralph was actually talking about Pat in that instance. Mm-hmm. Again, probably wasn't improvised, but still heartwarming. Mm-hmm. Agree. I love that moment. So yeah. another person with the, the great sight there. Uh, and the last one comes from Philomena. Uh, she says, seeing Mr. Miyagi's grave, his letter, and Amanda talking about Mr. Miyagi in his room uh, in 506. Underrated scenes was chosen giving Sam advice in 507 or 8, where he's talking about he fighting against and Daniel was fighting for, and he goes for Miyagi-san. That welled me up inside. That's a good moment, too. Mm-hmm. Um, their budding friendship is my favorite thing ever, by the way. As she continues, the scenes with Daniel and Robbie reminded me of Mr. Miyagi and Daniel. God, I can't tell how much I hated how they ruined that. They better fix that in season six. <laughs> uh, she's talking about the relationship between Daniel and Robbie, right? Daniel and Robbie. I, I think that's what he means. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we're going there. I think we're getting yeah, there. Yeah. I, I you know? think, you know, even as we say, uh, season five, episode six was a good, because Robbie comes into that room there. Um, exactly. Or you didn't fail so, me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, good moment. Uh, and her last comment was, "My favorite is the letter. What I love the most is what we hear from Mr. Miyagi about what Daniel meant to him. What 
having Daniel in his life did for him. Uh, people forget that Mr. Miyagi went through incredible tragedy and he found his way and in himself again when he met Daniel. So very good point and something that we you know kind of talked a little bit about uh, in that Miyagi pitch video. So. Mm -hmm. People, uh, well, I say, well, go check it out if you guys want to see like visuals. But uh, I do intend to upload the audio at some point, you know. So uh, we're in the off season, and I think now's a good time. So uh, all a great list. I want to thank everybody for providing that feedback, and again, for those that uh, want to submit, you know, your guys's list to any of these previous topics or upcoming topics, uh, you can uh, email email in pod at gmail.com or join the Facebook group. There's a couple of questions you got to answer and we'll let you in and you can comment in the threads when I post them. So watch party. Do you have a video that you're currently working on? You want to share? We already talked about the one that you recently dropped. I just um, put out. Yeah, there's a video. Yeah. There's like a theory video. Um, it's It was written and recorded. Um, and then I was going to start editing it. <laughs> And then that's like when they shut down production and stuff like happened and that I was like, you know, I may need to hold off on this one and I'll focus on the other stuff, uh, the more immediate stuff first. But I still do have that uh, theory video. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, maybe I'll because it's it's recorded. So I just got to edit it. So so that's right. still there. Mm -hmm. I feel I, I, I might have even missed the. Uh the the video the youtube video for our, our last topic too so i need to get on that uh because i know I, I put up like two episodes that night one for twisted metal one for um the the interview uh with, with sarah ann which um by the way yeah i um if you guys are interested in in my future coverage of Twisted Metal, uh, just go on any podcast app of your choice and uh, search for the Companion Network. And currently, it's the the cover art of uh, Podstalgic. And depending, I was going to on... say, I, I think I just followed it today, but it was still like Podstalgic. On, yeah, that was on Podbean. Yeah, right. Yeah, it says and, the and... Podbean, and then it yeah cover art, and then it's still below it. It says Pod Podstalgic. Like that's okay. your name or something. I yeah, I I need to figure it out because yeah, I I was almost like, well, do I want? I ideally, I would I would love to have a separate feed for all of them, but um, I kind of want like a shared one, you know, for like if you like how I cover things, you know, this would be the feed to kind of follow it, and I was just gonna leave Cobra Kai on its own, so. You know, I guess just keep it locked here. You know, make uh, any necessary announcements if um. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I make any changes, but, uh, uh, you know, Mark is, uh, is working on that. So once that's ready, I'll, I'll put that up and then, then there won't be any confusion. And, and I think, I don't know about going forward, but I, I'm, I, I'm wondering if I, if I just share the link by itself, it will actually use its respective cover art. Um, but what I have been doing in the past is just using like a screenshot of, you know, the episode we're reviewing or whatever. So mm -hmm. some logistics stuff that I'm still ironing out, but, um, the show's not out yet, so so that's good. But I I do have one episode up, uh, breaking down the the teaser episode with uh, my buddy Tyler, uh, who who's going to be on the reviews with me. And uh, so far, um, you know, shout out to Michael Jonathan Smith, one of the writers and producers of Cobra Kai. He's show running Twisted Metal, and he gave us a really great endorsement on Instagram, and we got um a ton of follows from a lot of people involved with the show, including Stephanie Beatrice, uh, who has been. You right. know, uh, in in a lot of different things. So, who knows? Maybe uh, Neff Campbell and Will Arnett might follow. We'll, we'll know. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. Know, maybe, yeah, maybe that that would be kind of nice. So, uh, so yeah, Companion Network. If you guys want to follow my coverage there, um, that's kind of all I'm working on. So for Instagram, uh, I'm at Cobra Kai Companion, Cobra Kai Pod on Twitter, and Watch Party Instagram and Twitter uh, at Watch Party One. Right. That's Number right. One. Yep. All right. So why don't you reveal what we will be talking about on the next episode? You're getting me kind of mad. I'm getting uh -oh. kind of mad. That's it. Uh -oh. Next week, top five fights. Ooh, wow. That's going to be a tough one. It's going to be hard. As oh, hell. my goodness. Wow. There you go, guys. Top five fights from all the first five seasons. Yeah. So there we go. That's going to be a tough one. That's going to be a tough mm -hmm. one. And, uh, really excited. And, and the, the fun part is going to be rewatching them. Oh, mm -hmm. that's the fun part. It's just rewatching yeah. the damn fights. So, mm -hmm. so there you have it, you guys. You guys can email in at Kobukai Pod at Gmail or follow the or, or join the group. 
So there's, there's your two ways of submitting feedback. And again, I'll read anything for previous episodes as well. If you guys want to, you know, maybe you guys found this episode late and want to write in for the previous two topics, feel free to, to send them in. I'll still read them. So um, that's it. Thank you guys, uh, as always, for your continued support. We'll keep you guys updated on the ongoings of Cobra Kai, and we'll see you guys next time. This is part of the Companion Network.